Hello, I'm Michael North, and this is The Art of Thinking Smart, where we consider the experience of some of Hawaii's best leaders of what it takes to be successful. From the beginning, middle, and end, how you carry through with your career and your personal life, your social, your family life, and how you mold all that into a formula that makes for success and productivity and something that is sustainable. And we have a gentleman with us here today who is a very good model of what I just said. For 40 years, how, how many people do you know who do, do something consistently for 40 years well? For 40 years, he's been a member of the Hawaii State Legislature. And for 13 of those years, he was at the very top of that institution as the Speaker of the House. And he's been called the Speaker Emeritus. So that means he's always the Speaker. speaker correct. One way or another, <coughs> Calvin is always talking. Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> and I've uh, really enjoyed the privilege of being a member of the State House and a Speaker of the House, which I've, uh, how would you say it, enjoyed it throughout my career. And even today, being a Speaker Emeritus, I'm enjoying it so much as the public service that we do. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question about yes. cur current events of the day. Yes. You know, in Washington, D.C. today, on this day, we saw the Health Care Act be either canceled or postponed. We don't know quite what yet. But we know that the Speaker of the House there, yes. who holds your job in the federal area, was unable to bring a bill um, that could pass. Did you ever do anything like that in your many experience, uh, probably the scores or even hundreds of bills that you've been associated with? Can you appreciate the situation that Speaker Ryan is in today? And did you ever do anything similar? Let me start off by saying this. I think Speaker Ryan is trying his best in hurting what we call our cats. Hmm. Okay, Cats meaning the members of the House. And they, as far as members of the House, come from all different parts of the United States, like Hawaii. We have 51 House districts. He has that 400-something mm -hmm. House members that he has to deal with. So he has to maneuver himself or guide himself to be really grounded of what he would like to achieve mm -hmm. with the replacement of the Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And that's where he's getting the big pushback. Mm -hmm. Hey, I've got it now. Why are you taking it away mm -hmm. from the residents or people from the rural areas? Right. And these are going to be impacting his supporters. Yeah. He's got cats and dogs and all kinds of <laughs> That's true. Animals. That's true, Michael. And, and I think so he's many, trying his best yeah. on behalf of the president that yes. wants to do the uh, change in Obama. And have you ever brought a bill to the legislature that you knew wasn't going to pass, but you brought it anyways? There's a lot that I've done in the past. And one of the most controversial ones was the uh, civil unions. Oh. Members of the House, you know, who were very lukewarm at the beginning, mm. at the end of the session, we were able to garner the 31 votes that was needed to pass it in the House, mm. where the Senate had already passed it. Mm. So that was very controversial because it was so emotional, so socially involved with the emotions of our populace, and it was dividing the community too. Mm -hmm. So that was one. The other one that really uh, took me by surprise that Yes, it was a difficult vote, but we did get it passed. It was a super ferry, mind you, of all things. Mm. I looked at the super ferry very simplistically. It was another ocean transportation alternative for the general public at large because we are not contiguous as four counties. Mm. Yes, today we do have Young Brothers, and yes, today we do have Matson and Pasha providing the service, but this inter island super ferry would have been a tremendous boost for the overall economy from the farmers. Mm. to the general contractors who are shipping their construction equipment and supplies to all other businesses that we have here in the state of Hawaii. Right. Maybe it'll be reincarnated again one day. <laughs> we never know. Well, I hope it does. Life is long. I, you know the best. I mean, 40 years you've seen a lot of tides come in and ebb, right? A lot of times, yes. Yeah. The 40 years has really sh given me the better appreciation of the Aloha spirit. Oh. And that's where sometimes we're losing it. A good case of example now is for the past two, three years, we've been trying to address the vacation rentals, the you know, B&Bs, the bread and breakfast, et cetera. Mm -hmm. 
whereby I do support the concept, but it puts a lot of stress in our communities yeah. because of the flow of traffic that occurs, that's one. Mm -hmm. And secondly, families not knowing if your neighbors are family. Mm -hmm. Growing up in Pololo, it was all the Takashima family, the Takahashi family, mm -hmm. the Sato family, da 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 da. Yeah. Today, we're seeing more and more renters, which I can respect because of the high cost of housing in the state of Hawaii and the very difficult time that some of these young millennials will have as far as coming up with a down payment mm -hmm. for a home or a condominium. So what would you say is one single key that comes to mind to your success? I'm not flattering you. You have been extremely successful. What, what has made you able to endure and be effective and be regarded with respect and, and affection by a great many of the people that you represent and even people who oppose you. What, what is the key, Mr. Speaker? Well, growing up in an agrarian society, grandparents, uncles, who are farmers, mm -hmm. people don't realize, Calvin say, worked in the taro patch, mm -hmm. the lohi. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that it took four buckets of paint buckets equated to one burlap bag and the quota was for us for my grandfather my uncle and I 25 bags a day 125 bags a week that a trucker from Lihui would pick it up mm. the grounding of being able to appreciate mother nature whatever you put in is what you get out mm. you know people don't realize that in the lo'i in the taro fields you have a mama taro and the baby taro mm. I always look forward when I do the hui for the mother tarot because it takes a lot of space mm. in the paint bucket but more importantly the thought of my grandparents fostering me in the values mm. sustainability mm. resilience mm. every morning before going to the tarot patch popo used to tell me calvin can you go to the ninamoto house can you go to the taka Tuk taka family house and so forth guess mm. what to pick up slop Mm -hmm. because we had a pig pen mm -hmm. right and popo used to feed the ducks and the chickens and we used to have our own watercress field. We used mm. to have our own ong choy field. All of this is what brought the family together about the value of so life. So it's the great circle. It's the ahupua. Yes. And it's putting in actually more than you take back. Correct, Michael. And right. another example would be twice in the year, we had to go to the intakes. What is the intake? It's that ditch way up in the mountain. Mm. where the water would flow down into the Hanalei Valley, uh -huh. right? Where does the water come from? It had to come from a ditch with the intake to the source of where the water came from. Mm. And we used to go and clean both sides so that the flow of the water would flow faster rather than having, you know, all kinds of plants on both sides dragging the flow of the water down. So now the lo'i yes. and the water and the mountains that you work with are the people. Of Hawaii. Yes. The legislature, I think Zuri can show us a picture of the Hawaii State Legislature while we're talking. One of the most beautiful state capitals uh, in, in, in of all the 50 states. But this is the taro patch that you're cultivating now. And I sense that you're bringing what you learned as a young boy, that sensitivity to your work as a politician as well. That's absolutely correct. The humility, the sharing. Like what, how we shared in the old days. There he is. Hey, is that me? <laughs> Boy, that's my high school graduation picture. I used to have a lot of hair, but in today's world, after 40 years being in the legislature, I've lost a lot. But hey, I can say this very honestly. Both Pre Governor Cayetano and I were called Prince Valiants because we had those, <laughs> hair, those type of hairs in the past. Well, do you have, still have the same sense of idealism and energy that that young boy had that we looked in? That photo? I, I'm very excited, and that's where I have always challenged the millennials to be a part of the you know, baby boomers. Mm. Maybe uh, my role here today was to say this, Mike. Can I be the bridge between the 442nd hundred mm. to the millennia, the X and Y generation? Mm. Just getting them to understand what it was in the 70s when I first got elected to what it is today. Mm -hmm. It has changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. Where I am a little worried and concerned about the Aloha spirit. Mm -hmm. When I first got elected, did you hear the stories mm -hmm. that they would bus in tourists to the opening day sessions? Yeah. And it was so much of warmth and aloha yeah. in those days. 
the food that was prepared for every elected official's office, the Hawaiian music, mm -hmm. and so on. But in today's world today, we have really formalized our opening day. Mm -hmm. Very, very close, mm -hmm. very small, very quiet. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the concerns I have as far as where we're heading. Well, I think our youth are coming back to some of those old ways too, but in a, in a new sense with new tools. You know? And right. it, it can happen on the screen of, a, of an iPhone. You know, that there are connections, there are rich interconnections that we have now that we didn't have then. Correct. You know, and but they, that they're has just hit us, as real. And that has hit us globally, right? Information today is just instantaneous, yeah. which is just fascinating. But I also worry about our millennia generation and next generations after. Mm. That are we going to de just depend on the smartphone or the tablet mm. as a mode of tr communication? Or is it the personal touch that I can shake Michael's hand? Mm. I hope I can give Shefan a hug because mm. <laughs> today all of these kind of lawsuits that we have also, <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> Go ahead. You can hug her anytime. Okay, she got it. Welcome. Xiaofang is, is my wife. And we, right. We have met uh, speakers, say, on a number of occasions. But we have to be very careful because of the opposite sex may think it differently. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about leadership for okay. just a moment. Because it's one thing to be a servant, one thing to express ideas well, which you clearly do. But then the next level up is to be able to lead and persuade and cause people to want to come with you yeah. on a journey. What is, what is the key to being an effective leader? Well, I would say there are so many different intangible values that we have. But the most important value I see as what a leader is, is a person that will be able to back up his or her supporters. That's one. Secondly, Michael... Mm, say that again. A leader... To back up his supporters. Yes. What do you mean? Sometimes, you know, chairs are afraid of making some tough decisions, mm -hmm. and I have to make the tough decisions for them, and I'm the one that's going to get the brunt of the criticism. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the role of being a leader, not being afraid okay. of taking the hits for your soldiers. So you have to be willing to be unpopular temporarily. Yes, sometimes. and, and you, you'll, you'll always be, because <clears throat> there's no right, there's no wrong. Mm -hmm. There is no, you know, how would you say the, as far as the other phrase I use? There is nothing that is different from what it is, meaning, you know, whatever we do, it's all relative to this point in time. Mm -hmm. And it will evolve into mm -hmm. that point. So when I share with the members of the house, one of the other values I really try to instill in them is this. Try to educate yourself on all the proposed legislation. Mm -hmm. Calvin Say will not take you to the legislation, but you have to. Mm -hmm. And then look into the chapters, which is our laws. From there, you begin to have them cultivate their satisfaction that they are educated enough to make a decision. So you're treating them with respect. Respect, yes. yes. Okay, we're going to take a break for just one moment, and we'll be right back with Speaker Calvin Say. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet, please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Hey everybody, it's me, Ian Davidson, host of a new show here at Think Tech called On The Go. What are you going to get during that show? I can't tell you. I can only tell you that it's going to be fun, and it's going to be sometimes, and I'm going to have a good time, and I hope that you do too. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here at Think Tech. This is just another one. Take a chance on it. See how you like it. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every other Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 4.30 when we discuss the impact of change on employees, employers, and the economy. We're back now. Thank with you. Speaker Emeritus Calvin Say. We were just talking about leadership and how what you ask as a leader is not obedience, not loyalty, but what you ask is attention and mutual respect. That's absolutely correct. And that's where I've always tried to instill in the members 
learn the budget as one factor, learn bills that you are interested in. Mm. And they would have to go back to their Hawaii Revised Statutes, which is our laws, and make the comparison to the bill that is before us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, as an example, which I did as a former speaker, as part of the referral process, which is basically leadership, I had all freshmen as part of the referral committee. Uh -huh. And the reason why, Mike, very simple. I wanted them to read all the bills that were introduced. Mm. And when they read the bills that are introduced as part of the legislative process, they get a chance to make the referrals to what committees it's going to be referred to. So you like the freshmen? And Every, everybody that I, I could, you know, in, invite to be a and part. And you're, you're kind of a mentor, especially to the new people. Mentor, but more importantly today, a mentor that will just have them, you know, gradually learn the legislative process. Right. The values today, too, are, are changing rapidly. You know, there was a discussion in the past about Hawaiian values, ho'oponopono, mm -hmm. tanamoshi, etc. I don't believe the millennials understand those two words of mm -hmm. coming together as mm -hmm. the ohana in helping one another. And these are things that uh, I try to share with the members. Uh, at another event or function that I was there, they asked, what values, Calvin, do you would like to see? Well, this is my response. I would like to take the best of all values from Confucius, Mm. to Mother Teresa, mm. Martin Luther King, mm. Cho and Lai, mm -hmm. Miyamoto Musashi, Queen Liliokolani, yes. Pilahi Paki with mm. the Aloha. Yeah. All of this, you take well, the you best. Know, sometimes you function as an ambassador of Aloha when delegations come here from around the world. And I want to just show a little video of the Hawaii State Capitol, yeah. which is unique. Let, walk us through that as if you're our tour guide, okay. Mr. Speaker. Well, let me start off, Mike. This is our state capital, which is very symbolic mm. of the Aloha spirit, the mm. openness. But it's also very symbolic of the islands, meaning that capital is a volcanic. Right. Okay, a volcano. And yeah. in the middle of the rotunda is the Aquarius, uh -huh. where we have all these different tiles, small tiles, that have all the different colors of blue wow. of the Aquarius. And that was representational of the And sea. there we see when the capital was being built. Right. I guess in the, in the 70s, right? Or yes. Late 60s, early 70s. 70s. <coughs> and on both chambers, we, we were symbolic that the house represented the Aina. Yeah, right. And the Senate represented the ocean. It must have been exciting sky. to see this rise up from the dust and become real. Oh yeah, you know, because most of the, the territorial government was in the Eolani Palace yeah. basement until we, the, the and forefathers there's, there's developed your it. chamber. This is the uh, House of Representatives, yeah. yes, and this is the State Senate, where yes. you see the Nautilus shells yes. that is symbolic of the moon. Yes. So you can see the blue, which represents the ocean and the sky. Everything is deliberate. Nothing there's is the Aquarius. Yeah. There's those millions of little tiles, tiles right. in the center of the rotunda. Correct. Yeah. It symbolizes the ocean. So it's wonderful to have this as a symbol of, the, there's a story of Aloha. You know, it's not just a reproduction of a dome uh, of the capital in Co Washington, D.C. It's something that's unique, unique to, to Hawaii. Yes, Hawaii. it's yes. very unique because yes. we are the most accessible and open state government yeah. in the country. There is no... We'd like Metal to detector so. machines. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> there is security, but security is only on the fifth floor for the governor and yes. lieutenant governor. Calvin Say and others in the legislative branch don't have any security, but right. we do have a sergeant at arms that maintains the facility for us at the state capitol. Well, now, you are originally, your family yes. origin is originally from China. Yes. So I know you're very active in the Chinese community, the American Chinese community yes. here. Uh, as a leader, and I know you've been back and forth to China a number of times. Um, there was recently an event at the state capitol where a number of high-ranking uh, delegates from different uh, organizations in the Chinese government came. Talk to us a little bit about the importance of that relationship of peace with China. Throughout man's history, that's been the goal or the vision and the idea of peace. My participation, my involvement 
get to see that Hawaii is the Geneva of the Pacific, mm -hmm. the area of peace, where all countries can come together in deliberating international policy. But for me, as a Chinese-American, I'm just so proud. Proud that, one, first and foremost, whoever thought a Chinese-American would become a Speaker of the House in the mm. state legislature. Mm. And what makes it so beautiful is that this country that I love so dearly, the United States, have given me that opportunity of trying to bridge the gap between mm. China, where my great-grandparents originally were from, with the American citizens that we have. Right. And that's what I've really enjoyed. Getting involved in different cultural activities, performing arts, vocal, linguistics, etc. Fantastic. Those are the things that tie people together beyond words. They don't require persuasion, they just require enjoyment. Yeah. Right? And bringing them all together, bridging that bridge. So that's part of leadership too. You're, you're a host, you're an entertainer, you're someone who puts people at their ease. You know, what I'm reaching for here, Mr. Speaker, yes. is lessons that anyone who is watching this program, whether they're in politics or business or nonprofit or their work in a university or in a hospital, everybody is confronted with these types of choices about how they conduct themselves. So, and everyone comes to a point of leadership, ultimately. So we're, we're extracting lessons from your experience that everyone can experience and, and benefit from. And I was very privileged also to have met a lot of the living treasures of Hawaiiana ancestry. Mm. I forget who told me the story that, you know, representatives say, don't look at Mike on his physical appearance. You look at him in his spiritual appearance. Mm. The story about this person that goes to a Hawaiian home, you know, not begging or anything, coming to say hi and etc. And the Hawaiian family would invite that person. And when the granddaughter told the grandma, we don't even know that person. So why did you invite that person in? Then the grandma told the, the grand, granddaughter, honey, it was because of the spirit. Mm. It is the spirit that brings us all together. Mm. It is not your physical complexion. It is not that, but the spirit that we have in ourselves in respecting one another. Mm. You know, <coughs> Back to the Chinese connection, it was so interesting to see in the past couple of weeks when Hawaii has been in the front page news nationally. And one of the people who put Hawaii there was our Attorney General, who is also has a Chinese yes. ancestry. And I got the sense that the action that he took in trying to open up the whole question of immigration yes. and provide fairness yes. for people was nurtured from beneath by this well of aloha. I mean, he never had to say it, he never would say it, and people outside of Hawaii would have no idea what he was talking, talking about, about if he did. Correct. But he expressed that spirit in a legal way and a very effective way in the motions that he put before the court. And were you were you party to that? Did you hear of that? Did, did you talk to uh, Attorney General Chin? No, I was just privileged to have read what he has stated. Uh. How he had been, in, the family has been invited to America, right, to live, and the sacrifice that his parents went through. It's mm. the same social mobility, the social goals of where we want to have our children become. But more importantly, that what the message was was very simple: we are all human beings. Mm. We are always one, mm. and not because of race or nationality, but what he said is true. Like we're talking about the spirit mm -hmm. of the aloha, mm -hmm. and that's where I think the general public may not get a feel of it if they haven't experienced growing up in that kind of an environment, mm. and that's the kind of stuff I enjoy. Always mm -hmm. tell yourself this, if you're upset about something, go back. Take a deep breath mm. and reflect. Mm. Or if you're angry, mm. write it on a piece of paper and then throw it away. Uh. Or if you're so angry, mm. could you find a plastic bat and hit something <laughs> to get that <laughs> frustrations out of you? Because in the end, if we can have that respect and humility with one another, mm. filial piety of your respect for mm. your grandparents, parents, that's the kind of values we have to in store in our future generation. So that's the essence of aloha. 
It's yes. not grass skirts and ukulele. No, 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 no. We love grass that's, skirts and that's ukulele. That's all commercialized. But, um, it, it's an effective marketing branding tool <laughs> sometimes. But when you talk to Calvin, say he's not talking about aloha in that sense. Because, Michael, in the, at the end of the day, if you can bridge two parties together, that's the best. And mm -hmm. I don't want anything in return. Always tell yourself this as another philosophy for myself. Anytime you ask for something in return, and I cannot provide you that service, you get hurt, mm. right? Because you had, I had promised you that I would do it on, in return for something. No, you do it because you want to do it. So these yeah. are traditional Hawaiian values that Absolutely. we have something very valuable to share with all of America yes. and with all of the world. Yes. And, you know, another player in that drama in the past couple of weeks was uh, Judge Watson. Yes. Who also, very fascinating, most people will not know, that Kamehameha he is graduate? of Hawaiian ancestry. ancestry, direct Hawaiian ancestry, ancestry, and a Kamehameha Schools graduate. What, I mean, he sat as a judge and applied the law in a very neutral and intelligent way, but also his sensitivity was nourished by the same wellsprings that you're talking about in the taro fields, right? Thank you, yes, and that's now what we can share with all of the general public at large. That's the profession they chose, the legal profession, Doug and Judge Watson. Mm. Well, Calvin Say took the other path or journey, which was the legislative process or the right. government process. And that's why it's so fascinating that we're so proud of all these individuals. They exemplify the Aloha spirit in a small way that may maybe grow as far as what Doug and Judge Watson has done. Mm -hmm. Well. We're sending out the Aloha Spirit to everyone now through this video, through this Think Tech. Whatever the time or space, you could be watching live or you could be watching this two years from now. Um, we've been so pleased and privileged to be with Speaker Emeritus Calvin Say of the Hawaii State Legislature. And we thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much because I've been so blessed knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aloha.